Hello everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I'm gonna to be making a duvet cover. And if that sounds a little intimidating just because it's such a big thing, don't be intimidated. It's really just like making a pillow cover, just bigger. I bought quilting cotton from I Love. I definitely could have just gone to a big box store and bought a duvet cover for probably cheaper than buying just the fabric. The one I'm gonna to make today is not gonna be cheaper, but it is going to be a higher quality. I find that a lot of inexpensive store-bought duvet covers, I just don't really like them. I don't like the closure at the bottom. Sometimes they're just an opening with no closure at all. Sometimes they're buttons or snaps, and I like a zipper. So the one I'm making today is going to be for a double bed. And a standard double bed duvet size is 76 inches wide and 86 inches long. So the fabric I need would be twice the 86, plus enough it to allow for shrinkage. And just for the top of the duvet, I need five meters. I need two lengths of the duvet. For the back of the duvet cover, I'm gonna be using a flat sheet. And then the last thing you need is a duvet zipper. This is 60 inches long, so that's fantastic. But if you can also use two shorter zippers. If you have a couple of 25 inch zippers, you put them kind of head to head, and that can be just fine too. The last thing I'm gonna add is some ties on the inside to keep the duvet in place nicely. You need maybe one yard of some kind of cord or thin ribbon, something to be able to tie it in the corners. I'm gonna be showing you an easy way to set in the zipper into the bottom of the duvet cover. In fact, the whole project is pretty beginner friendly. I've pre-washed my fabric. So let me just take you through piecing together the top of your duvet. The bottom is just gonna be a sheet and I'll show you how to cut that as well. So this is my duvet on graph paper, 76 inches wide, 86 inches long. Because I need two lengths, I don't wanna have a seam down the middle with two panels. I'd rather have the center panel and then two smaller side panels. It just looks better. This will be one width of my fabric. My fabric is 45 inches wide, but by the time I sew the two seams, that'll leave me 44 inches. So 76 minus 44 divided by two means that I'll need 16 inches on both sides. So those three measurements adding up to 76, good. You can use a fashion fabric, like even a linen or other kind of fashion fabric, which might be 60 inches wide. Again, by the time you sew your two seams, you'll be left with 59, and then 76 minus 59 divided by two, you'll just need 8.5 inch panels down the side. You can also buy 90 inch wide sheeting fabric. And so you would just need one length for that. You don't even need the separate panels. Just one length of sheeting fabric would be fine. And you'd have 14 inches left over. This is for a double or full. For a bigger size, two lengths will probably still do the trick. You just need to do this calculation for whatever size you're doing. I'm gonna be cutting my fabric, adding seam allowance to all this. So if I need a 16 inch panel down here, I need to add seam allowance to both sides. I'll need to cut these panels 17 inches wide. So 16 plus seam allowance equals 17 inches. And then the length is the 86 inches, seam allowance on both sides. I'll be cutting the length 87 inches. So now this is a diagram of the sheet and it's a full or double sheet. Most decent quality sheets have a four inch hem at the top, might be three inches, that's okay too, and about a one inch hem at the bottom, maybe three quarters of an inch. These are nicely finished edges, so I don't wanna just cut those off and get rid of them. But the sheet is wider than I need, so I'm gonna snip and tear this first edge off, and then I'll measure over my 76 inches and snip and tear again. I'm going to just cut this four inch hem off just about a finger width away from that finished edge. So I'll show you on the paper. So I'm cutting that four inch hem off. I'm not gonna get rid of it. Instead, I'm gonna bring it down to the bottom and that's where I'm gonna be sewing my zipper. I love this technique so much. It's, it makes it really easy to put in the zipper because you're never putting the zipper in between two giant pieces of fabric. You, you always have an edge nearby when you're sewing. So it makes that so much easier. 
also having those two nicely finished edges is just brilliant. It works great. And I debated about cutting this a finger width away from the edge or right on the edge. And that finger width away from the edge is better and you'll see why. Let's go to my dining room table where I'm going to do all that cutting. For the top of the duvet cover, I'm starting by tearing a good edge across the full width of the fabric from selvage to selvage so that I know that it's straight. I've got one of those cardboard work surfaces to protect the table. It also gives me a good grid so I can check to see if my tear is at a right angle or if the fabric is off grain at all and I need to do a bit of stretching on the diagonal to bring it back onto grain. It's pretty good but if it looks as if the fabric has been stretched on one angle, I'll stretch it on the opposite angle to bring it back onto grain. I'm also using that grid to measure out the 87 inches for the length, making a mark at 40 inches and then another at 47 inches. Before cutting, I repeat the measurements and then fold the fabric to make sure they're exactly the same. When I was sure my measurements were good, I snipped into the selvage and tore my two pieces. I find that tearing is straighter, more accurate, and of course much faster than cutting on long straight edges like these. It's also very satisfying. So there's one length that will be the center panel, and now I'll tear the second piece into the two side panels, 17 inches wide. To do that, I'm bringing the two selvage edges together, measuring 17 inches from the selvages, and snipping into both layers and tearing the full length so I have one side panel from each of the selvage edges. I then ran to my iron and ironed all three panels nice and smooth and then folded them lengthwise into quarters. Having these big pieces neatly folded this way meant that I could easily mark them into quarters, which made pinning them evenly much easier. I pinned one selvage edge of the center panel to the selvage edge of a side panel, making sure they were right sides together and matching up those quarter marks. I then pin the other side panel to the other edge of the center panel, again right sides together and selvage edges together. My selvage is narrow and the print goes right to the edge, so I'll sew at half an inch seam allowance. Okay, so all three panels are cut for the front, so now I'm just going to sew them together all along that selvage edge. So I've got two selvages together, so I'm not going to have to zigzag or surge these seams. If you have a selvage that shows, like a big white selvage, you definitely want to get rid of that. You never want that to show. But mine, my print goes right to the edge on both sides. And I'm not pulling it through the machine. I'm just keeping a slight bit of tension on it so that it goes through evenly. I'm not using a walking foot or anything fancy like that. I just want to keep even tension on the top and bottom. Okay, both sides like that. And then I can take it to the iron and press that seam open and flat to make a really nice looking seam. Or I could push both seam allowances toward the center panel and I could do a top stitch. With the top stitch, it does add durability to the seam, but I think I'm gonna keep mine just really simple and just press open and flat. Okay, the whole front is prepared, so onto the back. On the sheet, I'm cutting through the four inch hem and, and a bit beyond it so that I can tear off one of the side edges. Then I measure along that big hem across the whole width of the cover. So that's the 76 inches plus seam allowance, so 77 inches. Double checking my measurement and again, cut right through the big hem and tear the whole length of the sheet. Okay, back up at the big hem again. This is where I'll cut a finger width away from the edge of the hem. I don't want to tear here just in case the hem doesn't follow the grain exactly, so cutting is better in this case. I'm folding the zipper in half and marking the center. Now I'm taking the strip that I cut off the sheet, that wide hem, and folding it in half to mark the center of it. I put the center of the hem strip onto the center of the zipper having both the zipper and the hem strip facing right sides up and with the edge of the hem laying just beside the teeth of the zipper. And with the edge of the zipper on my right, 
I want to point my pins facing away from me. I can't easily place pins perpendicular to the edge on a zipper, so I place them in line with the edge, but pointing away from me when I sew. This just makes it a lot easier to remove the pins as I'm sewing because I can pull them out at the last minute. I pin the whole length of the zipper, starting at the center and making my way out to one end and then the other. I'm going to be sewing right beside the zipper here. Switching to a zipper foot, I'm putting the zipper foot on the right and I'm, I'm keeping my needle in the center. So now I'm starting at the very end of the zipper and I'm just going to be sewing right beside the teeth of the zipper. And again, this is the folded edge of the four inch wide hem and it's the right side up, like the little hem is on the inside here. I'm keeping equal tension on top and bottom again. There's my halfway point. And I'm sewing right to the end of the zipper tape. And if that slider gets in your way, just lift up and pull that slider down out of your way a little bit. So that's what the bottom end of the back is going to look like. That just looks great. That looks good. Here's my red markings and I just want you to see how awesome those friction pens are. Like that, I just love that. That just kills me every time. I always have a link in the description box to all the sewing tools that I use and love and the friction pens are in there as well. I've got the top of the duvet cover laying on the table good side up because as soon as I'm done this step, I'll be putting them together and I just needed a place where I can lay it out nice and flat and it's not going to get all wrinkly again. Now I'm taking the remainder of the sheet and folding the edge with the small hem in half to mark the center of it. With my ends lined up, I'm pinning through the zipper tape and into the line of stitching just because this little hem is a little skinnier than an inch. If you have a good one inch hem, you don't even have to be as particular. My zipper tape is going to come a little past the hem. On a one inch hem, it would be even. This is going to be fine though, just a little past the hem. And I just want to make sure that when I'm sewing, I'm still catching the edge of the hem. I don't want to sew the zipper just to a single layer of the sheet. That's not strong enough. And the fabric of the sheet will eventually tear there. Again, I'm visualizing the edge being on my right, so I place the pins pointing away from me. I pin the whole length of the zipper tape and then head back to the machine. Okay, my zipper foot is still on and it's still on the right exactly how I had it. And again, I'm just gonna come down beside the teeth about in the middle of the zipper tape from one end of the tape to the other. I'm not starting and stopping at the metal stoppers. I wanna go past that. And then I just want to check, because I can't see that edge, I just want to peek underneath and make sure my zipper tape is just going a little over it, not too, too far over it. And I guess when I'm saying a little, I mean two millimeters, a little less than an eighth of an inch. And here you can see how having the pins pointing away from me makes it so easy to pull them out as I sew. If they were pointing toward me, it would just be awkward. Okay, I'm just checking the outside. So I've got a double line of sewing right now, and that actually looks pretty amazing. I'm quite happy with that. And I'm solidly on that hem. There's no area that it's sewn to just a single layer. That would have been just a little too insecure. So while I'm here, I'll just lift up, slide the slider out of the way. Good, and then I can just finish off that edge nicely right to the end of the zipper tape. Good. So the zipper is totally hidden. It just looks so slick. I just love this technique. Isn't does not look good? Okay, we're almost done. Back to the regular presser foot. Just to finish off the back now. Now I'm going to be just sewing down and across. So I definitely want that slider folded out of the way. I can open it up a little, which will help me to flip the 
duvet later, but I want to keep those teeth together. Can you see that? Keep the teeth together. And then I'm going to sew down and then come across. So I want the sheet to actually overlap a smidge right now. I know where my metal stoppers are because if I hit them now, that would be sad. Good. So I just sewed just the end of the zipper and now I'm overlapping these just a smidge. I guess the total overlap is probably about three sixteenths of an inch, maybe four millimeters. And you can see my edges are not quite together. Hopefully the other end is okay. I'll just trim this off. It's not going to be a problem, I promise. Good. So that's what the end looks like. Totally nice and neat and beautiful. That looks so nice. I'm in love with that. So now before the next step, just so I don't forget, I'm going to slide open that zipper a little bit more. At the other end of the zipper, same thing. So I'm just sewing closed at the end of the zipper. My metal stopper is there, so I can be anywhere after that. Good. And now overlap that little bit and just sew it close to the edge. So again, that looks pretty sweet. Good. The back is done. Time to put them both together. This fabric has no direction. There's no top and bottom to it. But if yours does have a directional print, then put the zipper part toward the bottom of your, of your duvet cover. I've got this going right side down now. So they're right side together. On a big thing like this, I want to have pins at least every like 12 inches or so. Um, because that's about the space between me and the machine. And so if I want to keep tension on this, then pins about every foot works out really nice. But I'll pin a little bit from one corner and then go to the other corner and meet in the middle. I have not cut off the extra off the sheet yet, right? It's still a little, it's probably like 10 inches too long or something like that. I'm just going to pin the three sides and then just see what is left over. But before I pin the sides, I'm going to even up the top here. You can see like a little bit there, and I'm just going to snip and just tear that right off. I'm just trimming off where that four inch hem was a little longer there at the seam. Where I've pressed it open and flat, I want to keep it open and flat. As I'm sewing, I don't want that to fold over. I want to keep it really nice and flat. So I'm going to put two pins right there, one on each side of the seam allowance. At the bottom here, I've got a good 12, 13 inches. I don't want to just snip and tear that because I'm not 100% sure that that's going to be exactly on grain. So I'm going to test it out. I'm just going to tear a couple inches at the bottom here. And then compare those. And if it's even, then I probably can snip and tear across. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's totally even. So that gives me the courage to just snip in here and tear across. It's gonna be fine. Don't be scared, it's gonna be fine. And I'm gonna snip and maybe I'll give myself an extra little quarter inch. It's so much faster and it's much straighter than cutting. So then across the bottom, two pins at the seam to keep it laying open and flat. And now because I don't have any wiggle room at that end now, I know it's lined up nicely. So I'll just pin into the center here and then come back from the other side and meet in the middle. Okay, then I'll just be sewing around all four sides. And then before I turn it right side out, I'm going to be sewing the little strings into the corners. So let's go back to the machine. Okay, regular presser foot, right side together, edges together, everything normal. There's a seam, so I'm just going to check. See how it's trying to fold? Get that going flat, and you're good. 
If you're wondering why I didn't put this side up so I could see those seams, I'm wondering that too. <laughs> that would have been smart. Try not to have all those little threads going into your seam. If I fix it now, there's less that I need to do later. As I come across the bottom edge now, I'm sewing right beside the little folded edge of that four inch hem. And you'll see when I turn it right side out how doing that just makes such a nice edge on the outside. So just sew right beside your little four inch hem there. This is where I've got the zipper open a bit so that I can turn the whole thing right side out. A couple more steps before I do that. So I'll just go around all four sides. Okay, so I'm gonna run around the whole outside edge with my serger. If you don't have a serger, no problem at all. You just zigzag your edges all the way around. The last thing to do before I turn it right side out to press it is I want to sew a little string to each corner so that I can tie it to the duvet and it stays put. I've got a yard of this like super wiggly string. It's not good for much else. If you have a, an even yard, just cut that into four pieces. Nine or ten inches is just perfect. And if I want to sew this down, I don't want to just sew through that. It'll pull right out. So I'm going to put a little bit of a fold there. Put it right at a corner and just give a little back tack right across that. So that's in there nice and strong. As long as you're within the seam allowance there, you're good. I'm going to do one at each corner, but you could also even do one at each side along the halfway point there. But four seems good enough for me. I'm going to flip this right side out, but I'm going to be flipping it back right after I'm finished pressing it because I want to show you the quickest and easiest way to put the duvet in. And no, it's not the burrito method. It is just super simple and logical. So here we go. Just flipping right side out. I kind of fold the corners over onto themselves like that till you get a nice little point and then just shove that point right through. Now you can see why I love the edge here. You see how it looks like it's been understitched when I cut that finger width away from the bottom of the four inch hem and then sewed right beside the four inch hem, you get that little row of stitching there. And I think that just makes a beautiful edge. So with it all turned right side out, now I just wanna run around the whole outside edge with the iron and press a nice edge all the way around. So if I do it with the sheet side up, then I can just be sure to push that seam right out. And if I see a little bit of the fabric side from the back, then I know the front is good. So a little bit of arranging with your hands first, then a good press with a steamy iron. This is also my chance to pull out any thread that might be sticking out. So by the time I'm done this press, it's gonna look all gorgeous. Press that nice edge all the way around, nice crisp edge and then flip it back inside out. Look at that, that's the bottom edge where the zipper is. That is just so crisp and clean. Like I just am obsessed with this technique. Like it just doesn't get any better than that. Okay, so you might have already seen my video on how to put a duvet into its cover and it's not the burrito method. You don't have to roll it in any special way. All you're gonna do is this. I've got the cover on the bed inside out and then the duvet itself, I also have those four strings, one at each corner. So just put the duvet on top of the cover and tie all four strings. So if your duvet doesn't already have strings on the corner, then you just add them the same way I added them to the cover. Then all I'm gonna do is flip. Reach all the way in, grab a corner, flip it out. And the duvet is all in place and it's gonna stay in place because of those ties. 
for me, after making a duvet like that and seeing how nice it turns out and how easy it was, it would be hard to go back to buying one from a big box store. So I hope you enjoyed that. It was great having you along for the ride. Thank you so much for joining me today. And until next time on Catherine Sews, you take care.